Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a uh, Marshall amplifier here. Marshall mixer amplifier. Uh, I got this at the uh, car boot sale yesterday. It won't be yesterday when you watch this, but it was yesterday like when I'm recording this, yeah? <laughs> so um, I thought, well, it looks interesting. It looks old, this uh, Marshall amplifier mixer. So. I asked the man much and he wanted 20 euros for it. I said, oh, I'll give you 15 for it. And they said, it's not tested or anything. I said, no, it's fine, it's fine. So I think she was a bit surprised, actually. <laughs> Gave her 15 euros for it. I offered 10, but they said no. Okay, so one thing I noticed straight away, the power cord's cut off. I knew that anyway, the power cord's cut off. We can see some uh, transistors in here so it's a transistor amplifier which is kind of what i guessed it would be even though we have a picture of a uh, marshall and some valves there but it turns out when i got into the workshop this morning this is not a marshall at all it's actually a uh, something that's over covered by a sticker that somebody's put on that says marshall uh, so I looked for this 6400 mixer amp and this is a trantor and it says trantor i can see it now Apparently also known as Yorkville, the same thing, okay? Seems to have two names. And I found some schematics for this, some information. So this is 100 watts per channel. Apparently they built like a tank. It's 70s vintage, 1970s, okay? And apparently they're worth having or worth keeping. But this isn't in very good condition. You can see all the kind of like covers come off here you know it says uh equalization a lot of the writing's missing this is obviously not original somebody's put that on there to replace the power switch we have a big knob there but that could actually be original it's a <laughs> and this is a marshall one because it goes like i'll show you does it go to 11 no no it goes to 10 okay i thought it went to 11 it goes to 10. So we have that. Somebody scratched a, a line here, I think, which sort of says where the scale goes to. But it's still not on, right? Yeah, okay. So that is what we have. A bit broken. That one's broke. So I don't need this. I mean, I bought this basically because I was interested to see what was inside it and more to the point. I thought you guys might be interested to see what's inside it. Very interesting to see if it actually works or it can be made to work. And maybe actually this is worth something. I mean, it's vintage. Yeah, this is vintage. That's carry handle on there. This is wood. I'm sure it's genuine hardwood of some sort. <laughs> Could be plywood, I don't know, with a veneer on, but that's what we have. So let's have a look at this, yeah. Um, I can't power it up because of the power cord and anyway with amplifiers normally the first thing I do is open them up and have a look inside and see if I can spot any obvious problems. Looks like the bottom comes off this. I'm not sure if that's the way to get in at it. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. It overlaps the top here, so I think that's got to come off before anything else. Yeah, it also overlaps at the bottom. So let's get the bottom off this, and uh, let's see, yeah? I think in this video, we'll probably just have a look at this. I don't see it being sorted in one video, it's quite a lot wants to do into this, but um, I think we can have a good look at it first. If we're going to do anything with this, it's going to be a bit of a restoration, and there's going to be a lot of input from you guys. Yeah, probably those are saying, throw it away, <laughs> go put it back where you found it. <laughs> That's what my mother used to say to me. Go and put that back. What have you got in your hand? And you'd show it. Go and put that back where you found it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have all the screws out and this is loose. Yeah, it's moving around. Yeah, it comes off. Is anything bolted to it? Oh. Uh, we have something bolted to this, and I can see inside it. So, this is like a, an echo thing, uh, a reverberation device. It is, it's like a 
Echo box or something, yeah. You see that? Folded line reverberation device. So this is, yeah, Echo. That's the best way I can put that, yeah, okay. Input, output. Do you know, I think I can see some springs down inside there. I think this is just like a mechanical thing. Hey, okay. looks like a spring to me, that does. Yeah, I think this is like a basically a mechanical thing. So effectively, like you vibrate one end of the string and the sound comes out the other end. Of, not say string, spring. Yeah, you vibrate one end of the spring and the sound comes out at the other end of the spring. Yeah. Do these unplug? Yeah, there's phono plugs. Okay. Possible somebody's replaced this wire because it doesn't look like the other one. Or are they on the wrong way round? Maybe this one said output. Uh, not sure. There's kind of like the remains of a schematic on here. I don't know if this was for the whole thing or if it's something to do with this uh, folded line thing. Uh, We'll look at that later. Okay, so that's what's inside it. Um, two large capacitors. I doubt there's any charge in those. <laughs> uh, linear transformer. Look like voltage regulators, these to me. I bet this is like plus and minus 15 or something. Some sort of regulated voltage supply. Yeah, there, so four of these devices on it. Can't see what they are without breaking anything. Try to get a torch on this. Mm -hmm. TIP something, so there's some sort of transistor, some sort of probably NPN and PMP transistors. And then we have this. PCB that looks like it's hand drawn. <laughs> That's the best I can say. That looks like it's hand drawn. Lots of pins here. Something's soldered in there. What goes in there? One, two, three, four, five. It's the six of them, and they've got lots of pins on them. Oh, I see. So that's the rows of switches. Yeah. Three rows of switches on each. And the three position switches. So, yeah, you'll have a common in there. Three positions, that's all the switches. We have some interesting uh, ICs on sticks. Can you see them? Uh. <laughs> Look at them, so <laughs> they're like long legged IC holders. Why did they do that? Well, first of all, they soldered to the back of the PCB. That's the first interesting thing. So I need you. So I guess you need some clearance to get the socket away from the board. I have to say, I've never seen that before. Yeah, comments, guys. Below. That's a bit strange. Okay. I'm thinking now, this isn't a power supply at all. This must be the amplifier. Um, not a stabilised power supply. I mean, obviously, I was looking at it and I wasn't looking down here. So here we see the four output transistors in the sockets, which I kind of knew they were on the back. So this will be the two channel amplifier, stereo. Uh -huh. That's a bridge rectifier, that thing there. It's a bit strange as well. There uh, see it. That green thing down there. That one. Four waves on it, bridge rectifier. It says Fagor on it and they make bridge rectifiers. Okay. And a couple of large electrolytics. Oh, what are these? Let me see. Can we see? 4700 MF microfarads, I guess. Can't quite see the voltage on them. Mm 
Yeah, and you guys can't get an angle on them at all, okay? Let's have a look if we can. Yeah. I should dig out that uh, endoscope that I reviewed the other week. See you somewhere. Okay. Huh. No, not possible to see, but don't suppose it matters that much. Yeah. They're either good or they're bad, yeah. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to sort out this mains power cable in here first. And then we're going to connect this to the light bulb. And we're going to power it up and see what it does. I'm not totally sure what you've done here. So it looks like we have the power cord coming in. So the blue wire goes to the switch. And then the brown wire from the switch goes to the transformer. And it looks like we have like a tap on the transformer there to connect it together. We have another black wire from the transformer going down here. So that should go to the brown wire coming in, I would think. But that doesn't seem to go anywhere. And there's a white wire which goes off underneath. Yeah, you can see that. So I'm not totally sure. I think if I unscrew this transformer, it seems to be held on by three, yeah, three bolts with a bit of luck. I can see underneath here and see what they've actually done. Well, there's four bolts, but they're like seized up, the ones on this side at least. I, mean, I might be able to get somewhere by unscrewing those. So let's try another way. Let's get this wire off here. There's like a kind of like a captive collar on here. And then maybe I can figure out what they've done from that. Okay, so that just prized out quite easily. Didn't damage anything. Let's see if we get the thing off it. Yeah. That's it. So that's off. So this is our wire. So where the hell is this going to? The brown wire disappears underneath somewhere. I'm not totally sure, but if I take this off here and measure the resistance across these wires, switching the switch on and off, I'll soon figure out if they connect it to the primary of the transformer correctly or not. Uh, let's do it that way. And then I can put some more terminal blocks on here and put a longer cable. Oh, there's a fuse holder down there. That, that's where the brown wire will go. I've, I've kind of figured it now. So there's a fuse holder here. So I think we can say with good certainty as the other, the brown, the wire coming in goes to the fuse holder. And that's connecting back to this somewhere. But I don't know what this thin bit of white wire is doing. No, I'm not sure about that at all. Okay. Fuse is 1.5 amp. Again, if I take the fuse out, I can figure out if that connects there on that white wire or something. I mean, that's how it looks to me. It looks like the live is going to the fuse, the neutral is going to the switch, back out the switch on this brown wire into the transformer. This is like a center tap on the transformer. Then that's the other output from the transformer. And then that white wire, let's get into the fuse. A bit strange, but eh, uh, looks like it. <laughs> well, you can see here's a kind of like green of it. Yeah, a bit green. Right. Go to Ohm's range. So you'd expect to be a resistance across here. About 1K, that's quite high. Let me flip this switch. Okay, switch is flicked. And that reads about 2k. That's not reading through my fingers, I don't think. Yeah, it probably was. Okay, just get that onto there. We'll hold that one on there and get us onto here. It reads about 4 meg. I'm surprised it reads there. Uh, probably my finger. That reads open. Switch it on. No, it reads about 42 ohms. That's what I'd kind of expect for a transformer primary. So I'd say that is connected up correctly. 
see where this fuse is. Oh! Well, that's interesting because the fuse is blown. Oh, hold on a second. So the fuse, which was a four amp fuse, has now got a bit of wire soldered across it. Obviously, uh, that improves the fuse rating somewhat, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, according to the back, is actually a 1.5 amp fuse. So we better change that. I want to see now how this fuse is wired, if it's wired that piece of white wire. Okay, so I'm on like the outer ring of the fuse holder. I'm guessing that this is probably the power coming in, but it might be the power going out. I'm just going on the middle of it. Yeah, it makes sense that the power comes in at the bottom of the fuse holder. So this is not live when you have the fuse holder out. And then the other end, is that going where this white wire goes? No, that goes there. Oh, okay. So this isn't like a center tap on the transformer at all. This is the wire from the transformer coming out of the primary, then going down to the fuse holder. What's this other one? Does that work? Not that I think it matters. I think it's wired correctly, but... One end of the transformer is here. Another end there. What's in this uh, one with the white wire? Okay, whatever that one with the white wire is, it's not on the primary. Okay, so that's just something else. Well, let's not worry about it then. Let's connect some power on here, put the correct fuse in, and see what it does. I've attached a piece of cord, it's what I had, just a two-wire one that I had no end on. You'll notice I haven't attached the ground, that's basically because on my workbench I have an isolation transformer, so there is no ground effectively, that's for safety reasons. You may think that having ground on your workbench makes it safer uh, when you're powering up devices like switch mode power supplies. No, it doesn't, you want isolation, so that's what I have. While I'm here, just before I do power this up, let's just check for obvious shorts. So if we look across the main capacitors, these two smoothing capacitors, so this will be the positive and negative supply rail, whatever voltage it is. Could be 35, 40 volts, something like that, I'm guessing, on this 100 watt per channel amp. Could be more. But let's have a look, so from ground to the negative rail, Well, there's no short there. You expect it to charge the capacitor. Oh, well, it is there. I'll just uh, get it into the ohms range position properly. I'm not sure it was in the right position. Yeah. The meter wasn't switched quite correctly, so that's climbing up in value. That's also climbing up in value. So there's no shorts there. So the chances are there's no shorts in the main output transistors, but we can have a quick look. Get us up here somewhere. Yeah, it should be good. Ah, try to find somewhere that you can see it. Yeah, that should do the job. Just propped it up on an old scrap motherboard. <laughs> but it worked, yeah. So what do we have here? These are the output transistors, TO3 case. Um, so the middle one will be the collector. And then we've got base emitter. I'm trying to think. I think the blue one is probably the base. Let's have a look. Well, there's no short there. Let's get to diode mode. Yeah, that reads a junction. So base collector, base emitter. Oh, yeah, but base emitter is going to read low. There'll be a low value resist to base emitter. That's normal. Look, I'll measure it. Yeah, 100 ohms, okay. Go to the next one. Just reading, well, I think the collectors are in parallel with each other. 
Yeah, so you have two in parallel. Again, that low value base emitter junction. Yeah. And then you expect the other two probably be complementary. Let's have a look. So, are all the other ones connected together? No, because they're different channels. So, those two will connect together, the two yellows. Uh, emitters, though. Those are the emitters, yeah. So, base collector, we see the low value resistor. This one. Base collector, the low value resistor. Yeah. So this is giving base collector with a red lead on the base. And so are those. So, so this might be one of these pseudo class B type amplifiers with four uh, of the same type of devices, MPN or PMP. Okay. I'm happy enough with it though, so let's try and power this up. Oh, and what's this? Well, he says it's a stacking input, okay. I'm guessing that's so you can use more than one amplifier. I'm not really totally sure about that. I'm sure it'll mention it in the user manual. That's what it actually is, okay. Still won't prevent me from powering this up, so let's try. Okay, I'm not too worried about the switch positions at the moment. We seem to have volume, bass, and treble on each of the channels. These things are marked effects, low, off, or high, three of them. Okay. These are marked sensitivity, input, low, high, or medium. Okay. Little graphic equalizer. These feel a little bit stiff to be honest, but who knows? They do move. Okay. What do we have here? This is your main volume. Okay. And this is your monitor effects, monitor bass and reverb. Okay, so that's what we actually have. Uh, there's the light bulb you can see, okay. So it's power off, we'll connect this up and then we'll just switch it on at the mains. If anything, I'd expect that light bulb just to come on bright and then go off or fairly dim and go off. This is a linear power supply, but it still has to charge the main capacitors. Aha, uh -huh, before I do, I better put the fuse in. I have a 1.6 amp slow boy, that's close enough to the 1.5 I think. Just unplug the power again for a moment, to be sure, although it was switched off on the switch. Fuse, okay, fuse, right. No speakers attached to this, if anything happens at all, maybe the light will come on, the LED. Let's see. Not totally sure which way this switch goes. Watch the light bulb. Bright then dim. That's a very good sign. That's exactly what I'd expect this to do. So let's connect an audio input and let's see if it actually works. I've connected this up. I noticed actually this is a mono amplifier. I thought it was stereo because I'm sure that's what it said on the user manual to the Trantor 100 watts per channel, but maybe that's correct. But there's only one channel, okay? So uh, I have an audio signal coming in. Let's switch this on. And nothing happens. <laughs> I hear death in the background there. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so nothing's actually happening. Uh, sure, it is on because we had it before, I and mean, we can put the light bulb limiter back in. Okay. Let's see. 
does that light up? I mean, obviously the capacitor probably charged. Now we can have a quick look. Yeah, that didn't do anything this time. Ah, I've uh, spotted the problem there, guys. Let's uh, try that again. <laughs> okay, so turn the input down. We'll take the current limiter out and we'll switch it on. Oh! oh. Well, a bit of a hum. It's not very loud. Let me just. Uh... Turn some knobs. Ooh. So. It's basically functioning. I have a home. Yeah, I know it's not connected to ground, but that shouldn't really be a problem. Equalizer's working. You can probably hear that home now. Yeah. So. It sort of functions. And there you go, guys. Let me just uh, disconnect the input. Okay, we'll see if that hum is coming from my other mixer. Or is it internal? No, that's internal. That's not coming. I've disconnected the input. Okay, so it kind of works. So it's switched off and unplugged. See if there's any charge still in these. No, no voltage there. Oh, is there? Yeah. Three volts or something like that. Eight volts in that one. Interesting, I'd expect them to both read about the same. You'd think that they would both drain at about the same rate. They're not doing. We have some small capacitors on the actual amplifier. These things, uh, we used to call these things liquid all sorts in the 70s. Uh -huh. You'll probably see why if I get a close up on one there, yeah. That thing, that strappy thing, liquid all sorts. <laughs> There's another one there, yeah, brown, black and yellow, different flavour, obviously. So there's not a lot of capacitors on the main amplifier board. We have a few electrolytics down here. Possibly, I'm guessing that the hum is due to capacitors. It could be down to the fact that I don't have this grounded because it's on my isolation transformer. Comments, but that doesn't normally happen. I mean, I repair a lot of amplifiers. I don't have a problem with that at all. Let's have a look on these capacitors with the oscilloscope, see if there's a lot of ripple on the mains, even when there's no load. That'd be interesting. I have the scope in single channel mode. I'm just using channel one. I've set the coupling to AC. I'm not interested in the DC voltage on here. You can see I have the ground attached to the common point between the two capacitors. This is the positive voltage rail, so expect the trace to kind of like disappear off the top of the screen for a moment and then should settle back to the center. And we should be able to see any ripple on there, any AC ripple. Let's have a look. Well, if there is any, there isn't a lot of it. Let's just turn up the sensitivity. You know what, guys? That hum isn't coming from there by the looks of it. Just make sure the scope's actually working. Well, it would be if I was on the right trace. Uh, we'll 
we'll use this one okay so you'd expect this to go off the top of the screen and then settle back to the middle hopefully and we might be able to see there it comes And if there's any hum on there, I can't really see it. I'll just adjust the time base a little bit. Nope, there's nothing there, no hum. What you saw, that's a little bit of high frequency noise being picked up. That's not from here. That's so it's in megahertz. We're on hmm, 500 millivolts per division. So if there was a lot, you'd expect to see it there. Let's have a look on the um, transistors. In fact, no, I'll tell you what, let's look on the negative voltage rail first. Okay. Not really. Let's look on the output transistors. Whilst they're collected, that's the voltage rods. It should be the emitter, which would be where the speaker is attached. And now you see it, okay? So you can see this home is there. Just go to the power connection of the transistor. Yes, a little bit of a ripple on there. What's on here? Well, that's on the emitter, and we can see it. I'll turn the volume down. Yes, it goes, okay. So what have we seen there is effectively being amplified from somewhere on an earlier stage. Turn this up, it's back again, okay. Right, so the next place I probably need to find is the input to the amplifier. I do have a schematic, so that should help, but no doubt it comes from the output of this board somewhere. No, I tell why it comes from the output of this one because this is the master volume. Yeah, so it comes from down here somewhere. Turn it back up a little bit. So this is the potentiometer, I think. Let's try to measure the supply voltages. I'm thinking that this 
runs on a lower voltage than that, that would make sense. So that's plus 41.9, plus say plus 42. Exactly minus 41.9, the same. I think I can see a red, blue and black wire coming to here. I'm guessing that might be the power supply to the preamplifier. So let's just go on to the black, red. Yeah, 23.84, like a 24 volt supply rail. That makes sense. Same on here. 23.8, the same. Is there any ripple on that one? Just turn the volume up again. Okay. Let's just get the scope through and have a look. So this is the 24 volt supply. Oh, and we have it here by the looks of it. So it looks like there's some rip on the 20 volt, volt supply. Well, I can't get it to be steady. Let's take a look at the schematic. So we can see here, this is the power supply part. I found the power supply section here. What do we have? We have a plus and minus 45 volts. That is what we found. That's where the large 4,700 microfarad, 63 volt capacitor, the two large electrolytics. Those are the ones I couldn't actually read the value in situ, but I didn't find any ripple on these. We then have a voltage regulator, two of them in fact, one positive, one negative. So. These are the plus and minus 15 going to the mixer board. I haven't actually found those yet. What I was finding was a 24 volt plus and minus, which I'm guessing is this one plus HIV minus HIV. So that is probably the 24 volt and that generates the 15 volts. And it says here these are part of the M424 PCB. We can see some capacitors around these regulators and I'm tempted first to change these capacitors to have a look at this 15 volt supply rail. If we look down, we can see a layout. Here we go, this is the actual unit. So we have M425, that's the six channels of inputs which we have. And then this one, M424, the one near the transformer. So that's where those two voltage regulators are. It also shows us the correct connections for these as well and where they go to. This is the echo chamber, if you like. Okay, but this humming is there whether this is connected or not. And I actually have it set on the switches, so it's bypassed at the moment anyway. So that really shouldn't come into this. Let's have a look at this M424 PCB. So that's here. This is a bit of a gut feeling, guys, to be quite honest, but I suspect probably the problem is down on this. I could probably determine that better by disconnecting the input to the main amplifier, effectively. Maybe just connecting them to ground to stop any hum, if you like, being picked up. And if we don't get any noise then, the problem isn't over there. But to do that, we kind of need to know where the output is. I'm pretty sure this is it. Yeah, this shielded one, that should be it, I think. The two voltage regulators, it looks like one of them is here. This is bolt. I'm putting my finger under it and I can feel, yeah, a TO220 device. And one there. So we need to lift this PCB to have a look. Another place we can check while we're doing this now is this white wire, because I'm pretty sure this goes round, let's see. Grey wire, grey wire, shielded wire. That goes to this thing on the back. This thing is a stacking. Okay. Do you know, I wonder if they're supposed to have like a, 
a thing in here, like a kind of a dummy plug or something. Well, maybe that isn't the input to the amplifier. I'm just having a look to see if I can see where the audio would come into the amplifier. I don't see any more screen wires here. Yeah, that's interesting. I was pretty sure that was the audio out. But the audio was obviously getting into the amplifier. Admittedly, it wasn't very loud, but it is getting into it somehow. Yeah, the only other ones I can see coming across here really appear to be the red and blue, which are the, we know are the plus and minus 24, the black, which at least one of them is ground. The other one comes here, yeah, probably ground. And then this blue and white stripey wire. Which goes down to here. Okay, together the blue one on the main board. But I only see the one audio, that's that one. And that appears to go to this and go nowhere else. I find that interesting. Okay, let me have a look to see what this thing's supposed to be. Okay, so I was a bit confused there. I had to have a look around this because I couldn't figure out how the audio input gets into the main amplifier. I mean, we have three wires here, or four. So the two blue ones are the base the, for each of the transistors, yeah? Two bases. And then the emitter and collectors are in parallel, and that was the red and yellow. And the same for the other pair. So we have two blue, a red, and a yellow connected to these two transistors. We have the other two blues, a red, and yellows to those. That's all those wires accounted for. The black and white here from the thermal trip actually is the one that comes back down here where I started off by the transformer. I said there was a, uh, a white wire. I wasn't quite sure what it was doing. That's this one down here. Well, that actually goes to the thermal trip. If I put on the wire at this end, you can see it moving, yeah? So that's that one. Then we have the audio lead going to this stacker thing. We have the red and the blue, which are the plus and minus 24. We have a black, and what also look like a black, but it turned out to be a brown, just very dark. So the black is ground, so plus 24, ground, minus 24. And the only other wire coming to this board is this brown one. So I had to trace that along to see where it came from. And where it actually comes from is down here. So this jack socket you see these two orange wires and then we have a light blue one here this switch allows you to switch the brown wire that's this one and i can trace it through with the meter to the other end so i know it is that one just to prove it so the brown wire down here goes to that one on the main amplifier Okay, that one there. So that's the audio input to the main amplifier. It's not screened or anything. But it probably has quite a big signal and it probably doesn't need to be screened because of that. And that signal obviously comes from this board, the output section of the mixer. And if we have a look, you can see it's switched by the switch between these two orange wires. One of them is this orange and the other one is this light blue. And those come back down to the mixer and they come out here. Those there and there again, we can just trace them through. The orange one goes to here and the light blue one goes to here. So those are effectively the two outputs from this mixer stage. One of them is marked monitor and the other one says main. And then the switch switches between the two. So if I switch this switch over to monitor, I'm taking a different output from this board into the main amplifier. And I'm interested to see if it does the same thing, the same humming or not. The other thing I can actually do is just unsolder this brown wire from here and see if the hum is coming from here or if it's being generated by noise over there. So let's have a look. So I've switched the switch over to monitor. That's this volume control. Okay, and now we don't really get that loud humming. Uh, okay, you don't get it now. 
main will have no effect now because you're not using that one we can just switch this off again we switch this back to main okay and there's the hum so we only get the hum when we set this to main when we have it on monitor we don't which makes me think more so the problem is on this board so we're going to have to take this board out and have it to see if we can see where that's coming from with this sort of fault i think it's worth investigating in different ways so what i have done is i put the base back on it's not quite sitting right because i didn't put the wire through the hole but it's sort of in place i'm thinking well this effectively has a metal chassis so if i put this on maybe it will stop the hum yeah worth trying these things before we investigate further so i'll switch this on and i think you can hear that hopefully the noise reduction on that audio system here doesn't kill that noise yeah but i've turned it down turn it up hopefully if i put this near the microphone you'll hear a hum and a hiss now what i've tried doing was switching the power off because if i switch the mains off then effect for the power supply you know the bridge rectifier and so far isn't putting power in anymore but there should be some power in the supply if you know what i mean for a few seconds and listen what happens do you hear that so the hum stops when i switch the power off we continue to get the hiss for a little while then it goes off again on you hear that so the hum is definitely coming from the mains supply into here that is for sure and that again makes me think capacitors on the voltage rails and probably on the mixer we pretty much proved the fault is on the mixer board so what i'm going to do now is actually remove that pcb while i was doing this by the way i also reconnected the echo box thing and i checked in the schematic which doesn't really properly match this but i think it's very similar and i make sure it is the right way round in and out which it is okay to work on this well these wires are just loose they go nowhere there's three wires here that sort of come wrapping around this way it looks like if I undo these three bolts, because I think those two just hold the voltage regulators to the board, maybe small heat sinks on there, then I think this board should lift over. The green and blue here, these go down to the LED. I can see a screen and blue going down there to the LED. So I'll probably disconnect those two, which means we're taking some of these well, zip ties off. I can always replace them. And then this should flip over this way, I think. I might have to unsolder these three as well, but I can probably get away with leaving all these on here. But what I will do is just take a photo of what goes where because one or two of these might break off and I flip the board over. In fact, actually, better for me, I just do this so I can then refer back to this recording, okay, so I can see where all these wires actually go. Yeah, so I've got a record of that okay so let's disconnect these two which go to the led and now let's see if we can remove this board or we'll have a look on the other side so the led comes up behind here okay it's there those two i probably don't need to remove all the zip ties that one goes behind here careful when you're doing this not to cut the wires by the way yeah of course that one so that's the led and i can unsolder these now green and blue i'll just make a little note where they go but i do have a little picture of it so it's not really a problem and then let's see if we can move the board as i often do when i'm doing repairs i sometimes like drift from one idea to another and change my mind so before we just lift this board, I had another idea, and that was just to check these two capacitors, which are obviously smoothing on the input. Yeah. I should be able to check them in circuit because there's probably no other 
capacities after that as such i don't see any others that would really affect the reading so we can have a go so we have this one reads 6.6 .6. i think it's supposed to be a 6.8 or something like that this one is a little bit lower okay so what i'm going to try i just thought and i do this guys it's like you've seen me do this before it's not being indecisive it's just something else comes to mind this is probably how you should be with repair yeah if you guys think i'm wandering around aimlessly fair enough are you entitled to that so i've got a couple of uh 4750 volts now these are 63 volts according to the schematic at least but i know there's only 41 volts across them so i'm going to take these two capacitors and strap them across the original ones i'm not going to disconnect these i'm just going to add these in parallel with them to see if it makes a difference yeah because these are clearly pulls i'll just uh check them to have a look what's this one reading it reads 4.4 .4. it's close i mean these things are not close tolerance that reads about the same i'm happy with that you'll notice i'm not testing the esr of these capacitors that's because when it comes to bulk capacitors or smoothing capacitors like this on main frequency circuits 50 hertz or rather 100 hertz after the bridge rectifier ESR isn't really an issue. That becomes an issue with high frequencies and switching power supplies. So for these sort of capacitors, ESR really isn't important. Comments? Yeah. So I'll just tag a couple of wires on here. In fact, I may even actually just attach them with a couple of uh, crocodile clip weeds, actually. And let's see if this actually makes any difference. Okay, so I have the capacitors there. I've just soldered the positive of one to the negative of the other, which is on the white wire, which is ground. As usual with this sort of thing, it's worth just checking before any stupidity goes on. So I just want to make sure I actually have good connections down these crocodile clip leads. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't check stuff like that, guys, one of these days it'll come back and bite you on the bum, yeah. You should also have an idea of what you expect to happen. Now, from everything I've seen so far with this, I expect it won't make any difference. A, because the problem seems to be on one output from this board. If I use the other output, monitor output into the amplifier, it doesn't harm. And B, because those capacitors read OK. So I don't think it will make any difference. It's possible it might blow the fuse because of the extra surge to charge these capacitors. It's a slow blow, so I'm thinking not, but that is a possibility. Okay, so we'll just switch this on and let's see what it does. Well, it didn't hum, and you know why I haven't connected the speaker. Go! Oh! So I've connected the speaker back up. Um, let's see what it does. Again, I'll try to angle the speaker upwards so you can hear it on the microphone better, hopefully. Okay, so let's see what we get. And it doesn't make any difference. Oh, it did that though, it farted, okay. <laughs> That's some sort of instability, I think, with like the power staying on for longer after I've switched that one off. I'm not too worried about that. But we still had the hum. Yeah, it still hummed. So that isn't really what was causing the problem. And as we discussed, I didn't really think it would make a difference. I didn't expect to fart, but <laughs> things do surprise you, yeah. <laughs> what to say about things biting you on the bum, okay. So we'll continue then down the route before let's get this board lifted up and let's see if there are any capacitors under here after the voltage regulators that came off relatively easy one of the nuts or the bolts was hard to get to and they're not metric because i didn't have the right size sockets and etc yeah but it's sorted a bit of dust in here as you can see quite a bit of dust we have 
just what we expected from the schematic. So we have the two capacitors by the voltage regulators. These are the, let's see which one's which. Plus 15 and minus 15, okay. Uh, yeah, definitely plus 15. Minus 15. I should imagine those are absolutely fine. I'm more concerned about these little capacitors around here. So I'm going to change both of them and both on the other regulators as well. There's a couple more capacitors on here further down. One's a bit awkward to get at. It's kind of like uh, underneath this uh, thing here. Yeah, that one there, a bit awkward. I could replace them by fitting them on the other side of the board. That's not a problem with this. I don't have any of these axial ones, but I'm sure I can get some radial ones to fit quite nicely. There's quite a bit of space under here because it sort of sits at this level. Yeah, you see these spaces. So the front panel is kind of like sitting across here, at that level, so there's lots of space. Uh, some more of these liquids, all sorts you can see here yeah, on there. Just get a better look at one of these things. Another one, okay. <laughs> we have some of those. So first off, I'm just going to replace the capacitors around by these voltage regulators. And if I can get to the other two electrolytics, which I probably will, I'll replace those as well. And then let's see if we've solved the problem problem with this okay if you're not familiar with these types of capacitors by the way you'll see there's like a, an indentation here like a, a narrower part this is the positive end the little black stripe that's the negative end but you can kind of figure this anyway if you're not sure so this is the negative voltage rail so in this case then the positive end will go to ground now on these the pins are ground in and out i think that's certainly ground as pin one so if we go to pin one and we'll just get where you can see the meter okay go to pin one and that'll go to the positive ends of both capacitors together goes to that one okay it should go to this one also yeah so those two positive connected together, that's ground. And then one of these will be on the input, which is the 24 volts, and one on the output, which is the 15. So that one's on the, I forget the good connection. That's on the input, and the other one's on the output. So those are the two positive going to ground. And then we'll find the other one, This is a positive voltage regulator. Now, with these, the ground is the middle pin. Don't ask me why they did that, but they did. So ground is middle on the positive ones. And that'll go to both the negative ends there and there. Is it there? No, it's this end where the stripe is. Yeah, so these two are the negative ends going to ground. And then again, one will go to the in, which is pin one on these, and the other will go to the out. Yeah the 24 and the 15 positive. So if you weren't familiar with that type of capacitor, I mean, they don't make them like these anymore, shall we say, it was easy enough to work out which is the positive and which is the negative end. Here are the capacitors. We can see like the plastic thing is coming off this one. It's a 4.7 microfarad, 63 volt. And I think these are actually all the same. 63, 4.7. Mexico, 4.763. Last one will be the same, 4.763. Now, the input on these regulators we know is 24, the output is 15, so we don't need 63 volt capacitors here. I may have. 4763 i can have a quick look but i can fit 35 on the input and 25 on the output quite easily or just put 435s that's more than enough quick look at my stash it looks like i've got some 4.750s so they should be okay but let's just test these out of interest and see if they are 40. 
So as I say, where this kind of like ridge is here, that's the positive end. Reads fine. Reads fine. Not looking like these are what was causing the problem. That one reads very high. Now, that is probably a faulty capacitor. You'll sometimes find this where they read much higher than they should. It's probably leaky, actually, that one. We can have a quick look on the multimeter and resistance range. Yeah, that one reads a bit high. One of them I am suspicious of. Have a quick loop so it just goes to ohms range. So a capacitor should effectively start as a low resistance and rapidly climb up to infinity, really, or a bit less than infinity if it's leaky. Let's have a quick look. So we'll just test this first one. Well, it obviously has a charge, and that'll be from me just testing it with the capacitance meter, so I'll just effectively discharge it just shoot it across the screwdriver okay see again see it climbing up this is not the one that read double its value by the way so it's going to the mega rooms but it's not unusual for an electrolytic to have some leakage current I mean, that's over 10, that, that's gone over a limit now, so that one isn't leaky. Let's try another one. Don't touch both ends with your fingers, otherwise you'll just be reading your skin resistance, which is less than that, okay. That's quite high. Another one. Quite high. Try this one. Well, that one just reads like open, yeah? It reads different from all the other ones. Oh, no, now it's reading. Another thing as well, you remember that I had a problem on this board where it seems to be like the main output that's got the home and not the monitor output the monitor room if you like or monitor speaker both of these are powered from the same power rail so maybe that would suggest it's something more localized to one of the chips i have a couple more electrolytics on here so hey may as well change those as well i'll put these other ones in first and i'll call on to the other two and just change those or and we will test them I've changed the capacitor that was here. I actually fitted one across the back. I think you can actually see the capacitor went from this pin to this one, but that track goes to here. And I only had a pull, but I have tested it. So that's a one microfarad 50 volts. The one I took out read okay, to be honest. And I've just found another one I couldn't see before. It's just here. Um, it was behind this potentiometer from the angle I was looking, so from there to there. Now this one's another 4.7. Okay, you can see it quite clearly there. Just to be sure, okay. 4U7, so that's a 4.763. And this one on the meter... Read 16. Yeah, it reads 16. I mean, that is way out of spec. Now, you might think, oh, that's just a fantastic capacitor, but from experience, if you get these capacitors that read higher than they should, like twice as much, and I've never seen one that read four times as much, three times as much, they have a high leakage current. Interestingly, I can't really see it on the multimeter. I've had a look. I'll just short the capacitor so I haven't got any voltage in from the capacitance meter and we can try. 
Okay, so negative, positive, what do we get? Well, this is reading like about a meg. Remember all the other ones were kind of going up off the scale. It is climbing, but it's climbing slowly. And I don't really trust that capacitor. Yeah, there's something odd about this one. So we'll replace this one. Then there's one more, which is a bit awkward to get to, but I'll do my best. Okay, so as you've probably just seen, I've actually removed this potentiometer to get to the other end of this capacitor. It was really awkward otherwise to do it, but now I can get this out cleanly. This is the positive end. I've tried to draw a plus there. Couldn't even get to the minus end. I can get to it now. Okay, so let's take this out and let's see if this one's any good. I suspect this one might be okay, and I'll tell you why if it is. <laughs> and I'll pretend I didn't say that if it isn't. Okay, so here it is. Lost its plasticky stuff. I think I have got the other bit. See if we can read the value. Okay. Fifty sixty-three volt. Yeah, it's another four point seven. Same as that other one. Now I have a suspicion this one might read okay. And I'll tell you what I was thinking anyway, even if it doesn't. So, capacitance range. Well, actually, that reads bad as well. Okay, I thought it might read okay. It definitely reads bad. But there's no doubt about that, unless there's something just amazing about these capacitors that are way over their capacitance. What do you guys think here? Yeah. I was thinking this one might read okay because effectively on this board, we have two amplifiers if you like from what i think we have one's main and one's monitor i was thinking maybe these are equivalent capacitors on each circuit using i'm guessing these are quad op amps so maybe using two and two and maybe one would read bad and one would read good because i've got the home on the main and not on the monitor and that wasn't the case i'll replace this one as well and now let's try this Okay, so that's the last one. I've put the capacitor on this side. I've put the potentiometer back in. I've done that because it's easier to get at here if I need to change that again for any reason or easier to just to probe around at least I know where it is, basically. Um, none of these wires fell off. That's a bit surprising. I would have thought without messing around, lifting the board and soldering, that some wires would have fell off. That's what usually happens, but this time, no. Maybe they just built them well in the 70s. So we have this disconnected at the moment, but the hum was there anyway. Uh, we have it set to main, which is the one that's humming. Okay. So let's see what it does now. Okay. Well, we've got a little bump on the speaker. Do you see any humming? Power's on. Oh, and that's, you can all hear it, guys. Yeah, no hiss there now. But I think you hear the bump, I'll switch it off again. Hardly hear it, yeah. Yeah, little pop when you switch it on. Okay, looking good. Yeah, I'm altering the volume. Okay, guys, so that stopped not only the hum, but also the hiss. Yeah, and it sounds clearer as well now, to be quite honest. So, uh, that definitely did the trick. So, the question is really what to do with my not a Marshall mixer. 
amplifier. Yeah, I mean, it sounds okay, it's mono, it's 70s vintage, but it's in a very poor condition. That's the main issue with this. I mean, this is like corrosion. I've just got a bit of ice, so I wouldn't be surprised if he rubs the uh, writing off as well, but let's have a look. So, it's extremely warm, we can say that. I don't think this is going to come anything like uh, clean. And obviously, it's all scraped off here, so yeah. I mean, it's a restoration job, as I said to begin, but is it worth restoring? I bought this really as a possible teaching aid, and I think actually, as a teaching aid, it is pretty well. There's lots of skills we can learn from just messing around with obsolete or, should I say, retro equipment like this. Somebody's going to say bad things about me for calling this obsolete, but I honestly don't have any use for it, guys. But for 15 euros, I thought it was. Yeah, it was worth a good video at least. Okay, if enough of you watch this, I'll actually make enough money from the video to pay for it, yeah? <laughs> That'd be a bonus. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Get into the comments, guys. Let's talk about it. What do you think about this, yeah? It's far too heavy to put on the post, but if somebody's over here on holiday and uh, they've got some space in the suitcase on the way home and they want it, give me a shout, yeah? <laughs> and it's yours okay so on that note thanks for watching guys and i look forward to seeing you all soon on another learning electronics repair video ciao for now